seen her on Half Bait. You seen her on Craft. Give it up for Rachel True. Next person I'm bringing out, she's amazing. You saw her on screen and on craft. Give it up for her, Nev Campbell. How about craft? The craft. You know My what the dad. panel's for, right? <laughs> Hi, y'all. So how y'all like San Antonio so far? Great. It's awesome. The food is delicious, and the people are lovely. Yeah. Um, have you had our proud sponsor, Waterburger, yet? I don't eat burgers. I don't eat meat. Otherwise, we would. Or dairy. All right. So, how was the initial response different from now? Like, did y'all expect it to be a cult classic? I don't know. I don't think you ever know that something's going to be a cult classic. And especially where we were in our careers, we were pretty new to it all. So I didn't know what made a cult classic or a great movie or what box office was. Um, but we were you know, certainly pleased that it did well. And we're certainly pleased that people are still watching it and enjoying it. All right. And when y'all when y'all auditioned, <laughs> when you left the audition, did you know that you got the part? Or was it like, oh, I should have messed up? <laughs> That's every audition. Um, no, uh, we, we, I don't know about Nev, but I auditioned probably at least three, four, five times. And then we did a, a proper screen test, which I don't even know if they do anymore. It was like film cameras on a sound stage. You know, like a whole big deal. Like we shot scenes of the movie. Nev Campbell was not there yet. We had a different group of actors. Robin Tunney was in a different role. She was reading for that role. There was a different actress in her role. We screen tested together, um, which basically just a lot of like walking sexy in skirts. Um, so, no, really, did you guys notice that our powers get stronger, our skirts get shorter? Um, so, no, you don't, we didn't know, but I, I know after the screen test, I got home and there was um, a basket, a huge basket full of, like, witch shit, you know, like, um, oops, I mean paraphernalia. Um, yeah, so, um, there has been articles online, uh, stories that like some like creepy stuff happened on set. Did y'all experience anything creepy or scary? You can take that one. <laughs> that you saw the owl. I, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. You know, and when you're young, you kind of believe that stuff. <laughs> like, oh my God, did you see the owl? Yeah, like oh, Nev saw, saw, saw a white owl that followed us from set to set to set, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, no, you know what? When you're shooting a movie, you're shooting a movie. So, when, you know, when you're shooting a horror movie, it's not really that scary when you're shooting it. Um, so not that many weird things happen, but I would say this. Um, Feruza Balk and I were the two people who were interested in the subject matter already. Um, and so for us, you know, it was kind of a deep with that. We went to a Beltane uh, festival with Pat Devon. I can't believe I remember her name, which, who was a witch consultant that we had. So we did things like that. You did not go to that. I, I don't know why, though. I probably would have. Yeah, you would have. So we, we, you know, we definitely did our research and things like that. And I think for some of you out there who are into that sort of thing, it's earth, air, fire, water. It's just, you know, energy. That's kind of... It, it's it, nature. It's nature. So, I mean, that's for everyone, not just movie people. There's just magic and all and everything. Cool, cool, cool. Um, on the movie Half Bait, we were not smoking weed. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so that was that. There was no, there was no weed. There was there was no real weed. I'm not in saying it. there oh. wasn't like weed around. I'm just saying. Dig deeper. No, because you know what? That's another thing. We're shooting a movie, so uh, no matter what anyone's habits are, let's say. Um, I would never shoot a movie stoned um, because my eyes would be super red okay. and I would forget my lines and things like that, except for that one scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. We were done. Yeah. We, were, we thought we were done shooting. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, uh, it was a super fun to work with Dave Chappelle, though. They were great guys, but nobody, like, no, nobody was smoking weed on set. It's a movie. On the movie screen, what kind, did you tap into something? Like, I really believe that, I believe that part. Like, did you have to tap into 
in, no, into the idea of being chased by a guy <laughs> with a knife. I know it sounds weird. I did question. have to tap into that, yes. Um, <laughs> Did you ever get hurt on set? Like trying no. to get No, because it's not real knives. No, no and, and do, people do ask me if I'm scared. But you know, you literally you have like 60 crew members around and you've got fake blood and corn syrup and you know, it actually takes a lot to convince yourself that something's happening. You did all your stunts? Uh, I did all my fight sequences. Wow. Uh, I wanted to do the scene where I fall down the roof, but Wes wouldn't let me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to give it to, anybody got questions? All right, there's a mic right there. You have to go all the way to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Jump. Right? I mean, yeah. uh, did y'all use real incantations when y'all were on the movie set craft? I, I wouldn't know how to do that. <laughs> um, no, you know what? No. Uh, I think actually one thing we chose to do, they, they chose to do was um, the Manon in the, Manon in the, in the film. It's a spring in France. You know, they weren't like, we're gonna, we're gonna summon bills above, but like nobody was trying to mess with that. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, Earth, some of the things were from Wiccan tenants, right? So I don't know that we did that many, I don't remember doing any incantations. No, we didn't, but it was very interesting learning about it, reading about it, and getting to know that world, which I was not very aware of before I did the film, and I found it very fascinating, and I know it gives a lot of people strength. Uh, also, the times three, whatever you put out comes back times three in the craft. I think that's relevant for all life, you know what I mean? Whether you're a Wiccan, Christian, whatever you are, I think that's a good message from the film that energetically, if you're going to put out, you know, negs, you're going to get negs back. So, we're putting out green energy. Negs being negative. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like, totally, yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys don't live in Cali. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm a big fan of the craft and Scream. Um, I heard stories that they were going to make a craft too with you guys, and that it kind of went in limbo, so I wasn't sure how accurate the internet is, the internet is these days with, you know, sequel news and stuff like that. Like Do you Scream know how it. old we are? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm 37, I'm up there. Um, anyways, um, no, I, I was really excited to hear the news about Scream 2, so... And with, you know, being a cult classic. Uh, oh, the craft. The craft, oh, the craft. sorry. Um, I, we don't know really anything about it. I know, I, I know there's been rumor of it. Maybe it is being made. I have no idea, honestly. Yeah, I heard, we're not involved. In I heard a rumor from a couple of years ago, but then uh, I haven't heard anything about casting or anything. It wasn't going to be with us. You know, it was a new group of people. Um, so, I don't know. We didn't. We were just saying, we didn't I write it. the reboot thing. If, 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 if they were to do a part two with y'all in it, where would you think the story like leads to? Well, it's Hollywood, so we would be the mothers, and it would be about our hot young daughters, right? <laughs> Next question. Hi, um, I'm a big fan of both of you guys. I'm really honored to be here. Um, my question kind of feeds off of what they were saying. Um, we live in a time where a lot of cult classics are being remade and rebooted, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. What elements do you think would be necessary for it to be a successful uh, reboot if it were to ever happen and to really truly pay homage to the original? Campbell? Well, I, I think the reason that this movie still feels relevant to people is I think everyone can relate to being a misfit or feeling insecure or feeling like they need you know, uh, friendships that help them feel more secure or more powerful or stronger in some way. We all feel a bit beaten up at school, and I think that resonates for people and, you know, the fact that our characters... I didn't realize, you know, when people come up to us and say, you know, it really meant a lot to me, it moved me, it gave me strength, this movie. When you make a film like this, you don't expect that, that it might have an effect on people's upbringing or how they feel about themselves. And I think it's a, you know, it's a nice thing that that... that has been a part of this movie for audiences. Um, so I would just hope that, you know, if they made another one, that that would still be sort of the, the premise, that it would give strength again. And, you know, I do think that that's relevant always, so. And I yeah. think um, you would need someone as super fantastic as Feruza. You know, you need to find a young actress who's as she amazing. She was so good. Yeah, she, she was she's fantastic amazing in, this movie. in the movie. So, to, you know, you need to find someone to match that. As was Robin. As was you. 
And you. Thanks. <laughs> but also, um, I'm just going to throw this out there too, that for me, it was like a little bit different journey for them because it was originally a white role. I really had to fight to get in there. My original agent was like, you're too old, which I was, but I was like, I'm not. So I had to really fight to even get the appointment and then fight to be in the movie. Because I know it doesn't seem like it now, but even in the 90s, there were not that many people of color in a teen movie, unless it was a uh, teen movie of color. They were separate. So for me, it really means a lot when young people uh, of any shade come up and say, oh, to see someone who looked like me in a movie that I didn't expect and, and you know, in the genre means a lot. Like, and when we shot it, I didn't know any of that, you know? I didn't even think about that. So it's kind of uh, neat as an adult to have that um, reflection. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are both awesome. This is for Nap. Um, you were with the final girl in the Spring franchise. If you could do any other franchise, who would you like to be killed by? <laughs> you, mean, that took a turn. <laughs> you mean if we did a fifth, who would I like to be killed by? Is that, that or if you could be in any other franchise, um, Freddy or Jason, uh, who would you like to get killed by? I'd have to say Freddy because it was a character of Wes's, right? What the one? And I missed Wes. You're a final girl. Yeah, I don't want to be killed. She's not good. She's a final girl. <laughs> but if I had to be killed, it would be a character that Wes created because okay. he was fab. Thank you so much. I feel like Nev would have made a great Sarah Connor, too. Would make a great Sarah, you know, like a Sarah Connor. Yes. Who doesn't die and just kicks ass. Hello. Uh, this is for both of you, I guess. Uh, Are you holding a camera up while talking to us? Oh, okay. All I'm seeing is this, like, white dot. Hi, there you are. Uh, when the movie came out, uh, did, were y'all uh, invited to, like, rituals or ceremonies, like, would be a cult or anything like that? No. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, no, but uh, no, because, you know, we're actors. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like I said, Fruz and I were into the subject matter. Um, I've always been into esoteric stuff, and I have a, a tarot book and deck set coming out next year that's like part memoir, too, um, with my experiences whoop, from whoop. We'll talk about the film a little bit. So. Uh, no occult stuff. I mean, here's my thing, right? Energetically, how do you vibrate, right? Like, so I would never really get in with deep, dark stuff. I mean, one of the last, do you know the last thing I said to um, Bruza, who's amazing on set, you know, when we gave our gifts, we, we swap wrap gifts at the end, and I said, use your powers for good. <laughs> you know, and that's what I say to myself and everyone else. Like, we all have good and bad energy, so use your powers for good. Thank you. Huh? Your Instagram has a lot of positive energy. Oh yeah, I like um, True Rachel True because this because this little girl won't, it. she won't give me my name back. So um, no, I like actually exploring stuff on Instagram. I don't do so much esoteric stuff, but I love to talk about health and wellness on there because um, it's you know like I said, it's about energetically how do you feel, how do you vibrate, and um, I think what we put in our body. Think of it this way: any of you into witchcraft, like food is a spell for your body. So how are you combining your food, and how do you feel afterwards? So I talk about stuff like that, but in a fun way on my Instagram. <laughs> What's up? Hey. Hey, girl. <laughs> so uh, my question for both of you, what's your favorite um, takeaway and qualities about Bonnie and Rochelle? It was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, obviously Bonnie goes through a transition um, of coming to accept herself and feel better about herself. Um, I mean, inevitably, the lesson should have been she didn't need to change the scars to feel better about herself. That would be the more advanced lesson. <laughs> um, but, in, you know, I, the, the fact that these girls find each other and no longer feel like losers and, and find strength in one another and, you know, bad does not win. Um, <laughs> inevitably, you know, that's always good. Oops, someone's... <laughs> that's okay. You can answer it. <laughs> uh, I would say for, for me, one of the things, I heard an interview with Andy Fleming, who directed the film, um, he was on like public radio, and I don't know this is so specific to my character, but he again said that the film, it's kind of like the, the witchcraft in it is an analogy for burgeoning female sexuality, you know, like, uh, and how scary that can be for people and men and all those things. So I think that's one of the ideas that it explores and how kinetic, you know, just that can be. Um, <clears throat> So that's what you want to take away from your character. Sure. <laughs> uh, basically, sort of cool. That's what 
I take a okay. Don't be mean to my to make your hair fall out. <laughs> All right. Um, that answer your question? <laughs> Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for coming to San Antonio. You guys have been really kick ass, ladies. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. A question that I have Is there a certain scene in the movie that you guys just enjoyed recording and you guys think about to this day? When we got stoned on the beach. I'll tell you her answer is no. <laughs> That's no, not true. Remember. That is me. <laughs> I do remember, actually. But what was a favorite scene? Um, I like the beach stuff. Yeah, the beach stuff was fun. Because it was just a beautiful location. To yeah, be it was, it was really, really fun really to beautiful. shoot there. And it, it was a night shoot. And, and oh, that's it's not even that spooky. But, like, you saw you saw us, the white owl. <laughs> you saw us, the white owl. Well, um, I know when I did my incantation that the, the surf came up. And, and I was water, wet, water and washed away the set. So things like that. And I thought, I'm really powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it made us narcissists. Oh, really. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. You know what was not a fun scene is the flying scene. Those harnesses are so uncomfortable. Yeah, they used to get a wedgie. A really bad wedgie. <laughs> they used to fly people like it's Peter Pan in 1950. Like nothing has changed. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is uh, to piggyback on the earlier question from Cafe, but this is for both of you. Uh, what is your stance with the uh, fact that the country has been legalizing marijuana across the state? This is about the craft, right? <laughs> love, love, peace, and love for everyone. No, I'll say it. I, I, I think you know it should be regulated, uh, but it's a plant. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. That grows out of the ground. Uh, I think uh, not everyone should smoke weed, though. I, I, like, I am not against uh, marijuana, but I often say this on my Instagram feed. It's not for everyone. It exacerbates certain mental conditions. Uh, it's not for, like, schizophrenics. It's very bad for people. Um, but for some other people, like myself, um, it does <laughs> I, I like it for anxiety. Uh, but I'm also, I'm like, you know, I'm not high now. I'm not one of those people who would, you know, with anything, you've got to look at it as, where you would use it. So I tend to lately use um, CBD oil, which doesn't have any THC in it, right? So it's not going to get you anything except uh, relaxes the body. And I prefer that over something like Xanax, which taxes your liver and hardcore pharmaceuticals. Damn. What, you asked? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, listen, I think it's a medicinal plant. I think it's weird that it was illegal to begin with, but I do think things like that need to be regulated, sure. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I do. Th I definitely think it needs to be regulated. I think it's a little scary right now because it's so potent and strong. And and I do. You know, listen. My mom's from Amsterdam. She lives in Amsterdam. I've been exposed to it since I was a child. But in Amsterdam, because it's been legal for so long, they. You know, there's been a lot of studies done. They. You know, a lot of research because they have. A, a, you know, decades of history. There are a lot of people with issues, with anxiety issues, with schizophrenia. You know, and I think. We need to look to um, those resources and that research that's been done and maybe utilize it if we're going to regulate it here. Here's the other country. thing. If you're playing video games and smoking weed for six hours a day, you're wasting your life and your time. You could be learning a skill in those six hours. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with video games. I love them, right? But if we're doing something for six to eight hours a day and smoking weed while, you know, and zoning out, then... I, not accomplishing much. Right. We wouldn't be <laughs> sitting here. I wouldn't be sitting here if I just sat around and smoked weed and didn't do anything. That's the truth, you know? You gotta hustle in life. Hold another topic here. What, hey. when did y'all realize, like, as individual actors, when did y'all realize y'all made it, like, as far as, okay, I'm successful? Like, when, like, the family started, like, respecting... <laughs> when did they happen? Oh, I'm like, uh... <laughs> no, I, I, I think, um... The first time I saw my name in a crossword, you know, in, in the New York Times, that was pretty cool. There was a sandwich named, named after me in a deli nice. in New York City. I'm like, I made it. <laughs> a Jeopardy question. I think things like that. But you've got to understand with family, you could be in a movie like this, and they're, they would have been more impressed back in the 90s if I was on a soap opera and could have seen me every day, you know? Like, seriously. So family will always give you a hard time. But I don't think, I think if you're an actor, you don't really think about it in terms of that, to be 100% honest. You really don't. 
trying to find the next job and the next thing that is interesting to you and whatever accolades you got from that thing, if you were to sit in that space, you would be a narcissist. Right here. Hi, thank both of you for coming. And my question is for Rachel. I wanted to know what your hair care regimen is and the kind of hair products you use because your hair is beautiful and I love it. I've been obsessed for you. Oh, I know too. <laughs> Thanks, girl, but first of all, what is up with this weather here because this is not even hair? I'm like, oh. <laughs> Because I live in a really dry climate, so the products I use are very different than what you would use for an arid climate. Um, but here's my little tip that I'll tell you. I twist my, when my hair is wet, I twist it around my finger, and then I just let it dry like that. Uh, I don't, you know what, go to my um, Instagram because I do give a little tips there, but I tend to not give hair tips and stuff because there's six million girls with three feet of hair that can give you better tips on things like that. I'm just a girl who happens to have some hair. Do you have any makeup products? Uh, I love makeup products. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like, but you should write, but you have to, uh, maybe I'll record this. It's, um, lately I've been using, but I don't know, you know what, I don't want to give you any products because they're not going to work here. That's literally my point is like- she's not getting paid though. No, that's actually what I said on my Instagram too. It's like nobody's paying me. But the, but the other thing is everybody's hair is so specific and different. So here's a tip I can give you that's inexpensive. One of the ways I moisturize my hair is olive oil. You know, there's so many fancy products you can buy and spend a fortune on. But olive oil is fantastic. You put, you know, just put it on dry hair, maybe a couple hours before you're going to shampoo. Instead of buying some $40 oil, just get the Trader Joe's. Do you have Trader Joe's? You know, something like that. But a hair care is so specific to everyone, and that's why I tend not to give hair care advice, because what works for me is not going to work necessarily for anyone else. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, though. Just <laughs> staying on? Okay. First, I want to say thank you for coming. You're Happy both you. very thank beautiful you. and talented. Uh, so my question was pretty much already answered about the craft. So instead, I will ask Nev, how did the script of Wild Things fall into your lap? And <laughs> for Rachel... Always men who want to ask me about Wild Things. <laughs> don't know why. Your character was a very complicated character, very complex character, so that's why I chose that movie. That's the only reason. <laughs> I think your breasts, Nev, it wasn't. <laughs> I like her as a whole. <laughs> oh. hey, Rachel had a half baked strip all to your left. Will you answer your question? I, I, uh, I was sent wild things. I was intrigued by it because I wanted to do something very different from what I'd done before. Um, you know, challenge myself in different ways. And obviously, uh, Party of Five was doing as well as it was. I was certainly known for Girl Next Door. Um, and wanted to push against that and do something different. And uh, I thought it was a fun script and uh, daring and um, could be entertaining to audiences and wanted to kiss a girl. So, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I, I, went, I went and met with John McNaughton, the director, and did an audition for him and had conversations. And um, inevitably my agents were a little apprehensive about me doing it, but I'm glad I did. It was a good experience. Uh, and for the half fake thing, um, I think it was the regular channels. It came through my agents, um, and I just read once for it and with Dave. Uh, but I had also worked with the director, Tamara Davis, on CB4, which was a Chris Rock movie I did when I first moved to LA. My, that was really my first movie. Um, so I knew the director, went in and met Dave. But the other thing is, um, the side story to that is I think they originally wanted um, Kooky Stacy Dash from Clueless, but she refused to go in and read. Um, which Lesson is, learned, right? Which is ego, actually, on some of you know actors' parts. Sometimes we read, sometimes we don't. Um, but had she gone in and met with him, then it probably would have been her who was Mary Jane. Uh, the other thing is, um, I can still go anywhere in the world, and someone calls me Mary Jane and hands me something, which is weird. <laughs> um, hi guys. Hi. Um, first of all, um, I'm really sorry for my English. I'm still learning. <laughs> Not at all. Sounds great. Um, and I'm kind of nervous. Nervous. Don't um, worry. I just wanted to ask, um, what's your favorite thing about coming to cons? I mean, this is my first one, and um, definitely, definitely uh, blown away. And so I, I wanted to know, what's your favorite thing? I only started coming to these a couple of years ago, and um, I was really nervous the first one. I just didn't know what to expect, and I, I, 
it's it's such a nice opportunity for us as actors to to meet the fans and to meet people who see our work because unless you're on stage, um, you know you're behind a camera. They say action, they say cut. You do your job, you leave, and you never actually see what the response is. You read critics' reviews, which is not always fun, <laughs> but you never actually meet meet the audience. So it's really nice to meet you guys and just hear your experiences and hear responses and see how our work touches or doesn't. Um, that's always fun. And you know, what I love about these things is <clears throat> everyone seems to be very like-minded at these, and it, it seems like, um, you know, horror fans, genre fans, finding one another and having a blast together for 48 hours. It just, I don't know, I love it. I love the costumes, I love the families. I, it's funny to me that people will bring a three-year-old up to me and go, you're her favorite actress. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I saw a kid a couple of years ago, the first one I went to, this kid had like, he was five and he had a dagger coming out of his head. I was like, what is happening here? And but there's something really fun about little it. Little baby Sydney's roaming around. Babies I were named know, after named Sydney. Sydney. But yeah, and I want to say for the conventions, um, I think my first one was with you, we did it together, yeah. and maybe, and it was it was weird the first one because I didn't know what to expect, and it, you know when there's a lot of people around, it could be nerve wracking. But then after that, I totally get it, and I want to thank you guys yeah. because if it wasn't for you guys supporting the stuff, working. whatever the stuff is, whether it's our movie or another movie or another movie, you guys keep it alive. Your love is what keeps these films around. So thank you. Yeah. Woo woo. And to back to that question, we're like we're, we're fans of y'all, but what are y'all fans of? Like, what do y'all geek out of? <laughs> you mean film wise or film, uh, superheroes, <laughs> uh, scary movies? Oh, I like scary movies actually. I really like the one thing of Hill House. Did anyone see yes. that? Yeah. Woo! I thought it was really well done although some people were really scared of it I wasn't because I, I won't ruin anything but like at that one big episode I was like that's cute Nelly that's what I'm gonna say about that I wasn't scared but I was like that's cute um, but I just saw Hereditary the movie nobody told me how creepy that was it's a creepy movie so I tend to like stuff like that but um you know I also love classic films as well I love um, uh, French noir, um, you know, uh, Truffaut too. I mean, uh, I'm a film fan, so I think all different genres as an actor. Next question. So I'm a big theater and movie fan, and I want my goal was to become an actress. And one big thing I have is I need tips on auditions. Like, how do you audition for different? genres because that must be different from horror to classic it's all acting yeah you take it but it's all acting so go ahead yeah I, th I you know when you're developing a character or playing a character it's obviously all about just committing to that and creating that in your mind who that person is creating a history for them so that you believe it so that the person observing you will believe it I think it, I, don't think I don't think there's, there's any, any difference. difference when you walk into an audition what the genre yeah. is um, you have to, obviously, if it's comedy, you still have to engage in the character. There's the timings, you know. There's there's well, certain elements that's a bit more elevated, but otherwise, sitcom, just yell a lot. That's like <laughs> talk go. really loud. I was like, no, but she's so right. It's acting. It's all acting. So it's finding the truth. No matter what you're doing, you have to find the truth of the scene. So whether it's Sydney freaking out, uh, scary guys coming after her, you know, or it's remains of the day. Either way, it's the truth of the scene. So, um, are, have you taken acting classes? Because that's what I find people don't Most take. Most important. Yeah, like nobody takes any classes. I have girls approach me on Instagram, not you, but other people approach me on Instagram, and they're like, "I just want to be an actor," and I, they, I don't hear them say why or I love acting or the idea of portraying different emotions and characters so a lot of people just want to be on TV or, or films and I'm going to just say if that's your back start a YouTube channel you know like I know I'm not going to harsh you out for not studying but don't think you can roll into without some prep you, you know have to be mean? passionate for the craft itself it is a really really hard business to be a part of and there's very very few of us who actually ever get to work isn't it something like one percent of sad one percent of sad have speaking roles make more than 15 grand a year I right think. um and even have speaking roles so 
really, really hard. So you better love it. It better be the only thing you can possibly imagine doing. I've been uh, <laughs> doing community plays and little acting roles since I was seven. Oh, okay. um, my mom started me young, so it just progressed into I want to do this. This is what I want nice. to do. Well, I mean, I think training is the ultimate. Obviously, you want to have all the tools in your bag when you go into those rooms. Um, so train, 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 study, watch. You know, observe. Go to go to theater. You know, see what you like. See what your taste is. Watch film, classic film. You, you know, absorb everything that you can. The more prepared, and you know this from studying since you were seven, the more prepared you are, you're always going to be nervous when you go into an audition room. Usually there's a little bit of nerves, but if you're prepared and you know what you're doing, you're not going to tank it because of your nerves. Have y'all thought about teaching uh, acting classes, or do y'all still go to acting classes? Uh, those who cannot do cheat oh. now. Uh, <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I think um, on my on my Instagram, people ask me that, and it's like I don't really have time to give acting lessons. You know, I'm more interested in acting uh, per se than teaching it. it. That's a skill to be able to teach something. Um, that you know what I mean. I yes. I don't know that I could do that, but I coach some friends, and they coach me. Um, I think uh, we work in groups. Um, uh, some of my actor friends uh, came over and we shot a little short the other day. So we, I do things like that more just... So you're still learning even though you're... you're always always learning. still learning. Always. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with our work because you don't, you're not actually working very often. You know, it's not like every week you go to work. There'll be months off before you go back. So you want to keep your muscles working. I work with a coach in New York whenever I have a role come along that I want to, you know, find stuff and have someone help me and do my mirror. I, I use her and she's... Oh, I have a tip there for actor or anyone who wants to explore acting. Sometimes if I'm trying to get stuck in a scene and they can't figure out how to say the line, I'll play around with it in different accents and different things and just to just to loosen it up. And the tip I'll say for actors that I had to learn when I was younger was just make a choice on the line. If the line is I'm going to the store and you just say it blank like I'm going to the store, that means nothing. But are you upset? Are you excited? Are you, are you happy they're going to? You have to, any choice is better than no choice, right? In, in the craft or any other movies y'all have done, is have y'all seen any like mistakes y'all did that they didn't edit out? Oh, I've got. I mean, I, every every project that I've done, I would say I would do that differently now. Aspe yeah. Aspects of it. I mean, yeah. you are always yeah, always learning watch. and improving. I don't. I don't sit. We watch don't watch. Our, <laughs> no, I actually still the watch their stuff. Click, flip around. <laughs> I I was wondering in your time of going to cons. Has there ever been another guest that you have totally geeked out seeing? I get excited about meeting everybody at these things. It's always fun because it's so rare that we actually, unless you're, you know, working with specific actors on a film, we rarely run into each other or meet each other. So I'm always excited. I would have loved to have met Rick Moranis. Is he still here? No. Oh, yeah. oh man, I'm from Toronto, so I grew up, you know, knowing that he's Canadian. Okay, but so yesterday I met Jeff Goldblum in the green room, and awesome. I literally was like, oh my god, what a all drink of water, and then. <laughs> And then I didn't say anything because I was like, he's married and I'm not a 1940s gumshoe detective looking at a dame. Like, just leave the man alone. It was just... But he's... I never really... He's an amazing actor, but I never really thought about him in terms of that. And I was like, oh yeah, he is like walking south. Look <laughs> <laughs> how sexy he is. But um, I'm going to give your answer for Rachel. <laughs> It's exciting to meet lots of these people. We've grown up seeing them as well, or we've maybe worked with them a long time ago. So just, you know, seeing people we know, too, is fun. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know, I grew up, like, in elementary school when Scream and also The Crap came out. It was, like, two of the movies that me and my classmates were like, oh, my God, this is intense. This is, like, our first grown-up movie. And it kind of changed my point of view of what's out there because I grew up Catholic, so I didn't know if it was that kind of Wicca, like um, that kind of religion. And I was just wondering, is is there a movie that kind of like made you open your eyes to the outside world? You're like, oh, I didn't know this about this life, or it's a movie that kind of changed your life in a sense. You know, I was lucky in the sense that my father always had us watching foreign films from very, very early. So I was exposed to seeing other worlds, um, very young and other cultures, and, and very grateful for that. I think it's important that we look at films from, from other countries. We learn so much about 
their cultures, their way of being, their thing, the things that excite them and don't, and don't, and um, I don't know. I was lucky in that sense. So I don't know if there's any one specific film that that opened me up in that way, but that's what's wonderful about movies, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I, don't, I can't really think of one specific film rather than, you know, just the feeling of that time in my life. Um, but I do know, I'll throw this out there for you, especially having a lot of people grow up Catholic. Um, one thing I've learned about it is, um, like, let's say tarot cards. You know, a lot of girls come up and they're like, ooh, I don't know, my mom says, and the devil. And I'm like, wait a second, you see this the angel? That's an angel from the Bible. You see this tower here? That's the Tower of Babel from the Bible. So there's so many Christian allegories in something like a tarot deck. Um, you know, it's all sort of related to me. Um, I think, uh, you know what book I really liked when I was very young? I read... Um, um, Miss of Avalon, right? And I love I love learning about that because I didn't know much about paganism and things like that, and how it tied in with Christianity, you know. So I sort of like learning um, about all different religions and sometimes movies about different religious leaders because I just I didn't know, you know. So just learning in general. Thank you. Um, my question's for me. If you no. had a, no, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> if you had a chance to do. Wes Craven passed away, and I think it would be really hard to make a screen film without him. I mean, he was the master, and you know, he was so phenomenal, and did so, is the reason these films are as good as they are. Um, also, there's some issues with the Weinsteins right now, <laughs> uh, so it might be difficult <laughs> to make another screen movie, uh, which is all unfortunate. Um, yeah, and I don't know if I'd want to do one without Wes, to be honest. Big fan. Um, my question is: Earlier, you said that it was different going from one genre to another. Um, for you, Deb, going from screen to a movie like uh, uh, Wild Things. Yes, Wild Things. Is there a type of movie that either of you have not done that you're still nervous about doing that you would that you would really like to do that uh, for some reason you haven't yet? If there's one genre. I, I just, I, you know, I did Skyscraper this year, did an action movie, and that was super fun. I hadn't done that before. Um, and I'd always wanted to, because I was a dancer, so I really like getting physical, so that was a blast for me, and I think what's wonderful about our work is we do get to sort of jump into doing new things, um, so I was, I was excited about that. I would love to do a big musical. I've done, me, I, you know, I did Reefer Madness for Showtime years ago with my brother, and I started in that, I was a dancer, and I started in that world on stage. Um, love to do a big musical. I think that would be fun. For you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't sing. So I'm like, oh, that sounds scary. Uh, or, uh, or dance. So fun. Um, I would love to do, I've never done an action movie. I think that would be so much, so much fun to run around. Uh, <laughs> that's what I did. Uh, also, also, not for nothing, um, I would love to play a musician too, because I can't really play guitar, but when someone put one in front of me, I can fake it real well, and all of a sudden I was so much more out there. And so to be able to play that kind of character would, would be fun. Um, and a period piece. I mean, back when I first started, uh, there were no roles in a period piece except as a slave for me, so I'd like to think I'd love to do a period piece where maybe I wasn't a slave. <laughs> what? That's true. <laughs> Speaking of the Scream, the franchise and all that, has MTV during their uh, run of the television series for Scream, uh, by the way, question for Nev, uh, have they come to you in terms of any discussions for a potential involvement such as cameos or doing a full episode dedicated to your character, Sydney, or anything of that nature? Well, we speak really quick. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't take a breath there. <laughs> I, no, no, they never did. I'm offended. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, to be honest, I haven't seen Scream, the TV show. Have you I've seen some sparks here and there that are reminiscent of the actual film series itself? And yeah. from where I saw it, started picking up a bit. Good. Well, that's good. No, I, you know what? I have a six-year-old and a nine-month-old at home, so it's not something I would choose to put on the TV. <laughs> Might be slightly traumatizing for them. Although lots of people do that here at Comic Con. <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with me. Um, so, n no, no one ever approached me about that. But I've heard it's picked up. Because I know at the beginning people were a little disappointed that it was not at Woodsboro and it was not in the same vein or same world. It didn't have the same actors. And um, But I, from what I understand, people are starting to enjoy it.
a lot of y'all are people's, uh, a lot of men's first crushes. Uh, mm -hmm. Do y'all have any crazy experiences from, like, <laughs> you was my first crush? Like, Get a lot of that. Here's a good one. <laughs> Prince William told me that he had a poster of me on his wall when he was a kid. Talk about <laughs> I cannot. Why did you lock that down? <laughs> it might have just been a line, but it was a good one. <laughs> Off Twitter and have a 10 year restraining order. So, no, um, I, you know, I'm sure I've had cute crushes, like, but never a prince. But I will say that's the thing, and I'm sure you've had the same thing. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't William, it was Harry. I got it wrong, it was Harry. Oh, why did you, you should remember that, right? It's not in my way. Um, I think when you're in genre pieces like this, I had a bodyguard. I did for a bit, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, you just, I think when you're in the public eye, whether you're an actor or not, just anyone in the public eye can attract certain things. So, you know, uh, I did have a stalker, you know, uh, at my house and blah, 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 blah. It was rather complicated. Um, so I think things like that suck, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what are, do y'all have anything that we should be keeping an eye out on? I've just been being a mom right now because okay. we adopted a baby boy five nine months ago. I, I was in LA uh, last week pitching a show and got two offers, so I'm just negotiating that right now. So I'm creating a new show, and so we're going to be uh, developing that this year and hope to shoot it this year. So that's exciting. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yay! Uh, like I said, I have a tarot book and deck set coming out. Um, which publishing is slow as molasses, so it'll be either 2019 or early 2020. And then, um, I don't know if you guys have seen this show on FX called Better Things. It's a really great show, so I have a little recurring on that, but won't be on until January or February, something like that. Um, but it's kind of hard to juggle. The writing is sort of full time, so I'm, I'm focused on that until I'm finished, and then hopefully I'll be in different things. Will, be, like, will all that be on your website? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it should be. It should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm probably most active on Instagram. Okay. Um, I think I'm on Facebook at official Rachel True, which I'm trying to learn to update. I got real scared off all that after the stalker. So um, you know, I'm dipping my. I've started dipping my toe in the last couple of years back into social media. But I'm on Instagram a lot, and there's a link in the bio for. I have a health centric um, website, by the way, that I haven't updated in a minute. But if any of you are interested in that stuff, I back it up with doctor studies, you know, it's not just my opinion, I'm, ca I'm calling from different things, and I, I think for a lot of that was because I had different things that happened to me, and so it's less my story what happened to me than here are some things y'all can do so that you don't end up, uh, you know, infirm and sick, you know, I had to deal with some health stuff for a while, so, you know, those are just, I like exploring all my different passions online, whether it's health and wellness, or acting, or tarot, or different things, so. We've got enough time for three more questions, so... Hello. I'd like to know, uh, since reboots are in, are you thinking about doing another reboot? I mean, we haven't done another one, but would you do a reboot of Party of Five? You know what's really great is um, Chris Kaiser and Amy Littman, who created the show, are doing a new version of Party of Five, and I think it's a really great version. They're doing a version about a Mexican family who's um, five kids and their parents are sent across the border. And so they have to raise themselves in the same way that we had to as orphans, and obviously I think it's very prevalent at the moment, a really important topic, and I think a great concept. Thank so, yeah. That's amazing, by the way, because I actually was telling Nev, I got into an accidental Twitter smackdown with maybe one of the charm girls by accident. I did not mean to, but my thing Rachel was... Rachel has no opinions, obviously, so... But my thing was, I, you know, like, I love that Nev just said, I'm so excited about this Party of Five reboot, especially because it'll be with a Latin family and exploring these topics that we have not seen on television, right? And so for me, my thing was, hey, charm girls, why don't you just be excited there's some Latin brujas on TV. How about that? Let's stick with that and don't worry about our egos. Because it seemed ego to me, like, to be, because what do we say? Like, they do a craft remake, awesome, good luck. So to see these girls from the original one so upset that they were going to redo their TV show, I was like, I get it, I get it, that maybe it's a little ego painful, but 
listen, it's a new day, it's a new dawn, and I'm so excited for those young Spanish girls to have a TV show. I think they should do like an all Asian craft. That to me, yes. I would literally be like so into that. So, you know, I think some of, if you switch it up when you do a remake, to me it's more interesting. There's so many great so many. ones I know that I haven't had a chance to work with. I mean, there's so, who's your favorite directors? <laughs> Hard question. <laughs> uh, there's so many. Like, I, I don't even know that I could name one because there's so many great talented directors from Jordan Peele with Get Out to, you know, old school directors who are doing their last few movies. So anyone talented, it's a joy to work with. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly I could I couldn't name one because it's, it's, it's there's a vast amount of directors I would love to work with and actors. You know, as long as we get the opportunity to, to work with people who are cha challenging themselves and doing something different. Although I would like to work with Ava DuVernay, yes. if I want to speak that into existence. I think she's super duper talented. All right. Thank that you. Is, that is the craft panel, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. You guys have been awesome. Thank you.